In this video tutorial, we will be reviewing the concept of assets and bases, specifically that of the Arrhenius definition and the Bronsted-Lowry definition. If you recall from grade 10 and grade 11 chemistry, uh, acids tend to have a sour taste. They are electrically conductive, where the greater their concentration, the greater their electrical conductivity. They react with metals in a single displacement reaction to produce hydrogen gas, and they can react with carbonate compounds to produce carbon dioxide gas. Bases, on the other hand, are bitter tasting. They are also electrically conductive, where again, the greater the concentration of the base, the greater its electrical conductivity. They're also able to break down large organic molecules, such as fats and oils and proteins. And this accounts for their slippery feel, as they are emulsifying the oils in your skin into soap. This process is known as saponification. When it comes to acids and bases, there are many definitions. However, this year we will be covering two of them, the Arrhenius definition and the Bronsted-Lowry definition. You probably learned the Arrhenius definition first, uh, simply because it's one of the easier ones to understand. So according to Arrhenius, the base is the substance that dissociates in water, so when you dump it in water, it will break up to form one or more hydroxide ions. Meanwhile, an Arrhenius acid is a substance that dissociates and ionizes in water to produce one or more hydrogen ions. Now, it's important to note that the H plus ion is essentially a proton. So if you recall, the hydrogen atom has one electron, one proton, and if you're talking about protium, has no neutrons. And so what happens is when you have an H plus charge, a positive charge means it's lost an electron, so that electron's gone. And because it has no neutrons, well, essentially, a H plus ion is a proton. Now, if you recall, water has two lone pair electrons floating around this end of the molecule, giving water its polar nature where this end of the water or molecule tends to be partially positive, and this end of the water molecule tends to be partially negative. With the example of hydrochloric acid, you'll notice that the hydrogen leaves behind its green electron for the chlorine to keep. That means this hydrogen ion is now very, very positive, essentially it's a proton floating around solution. So of course a very positive hydrogen ion is going to be attracted to the very negative side of the water molecule. In so doing, the hydrogen ion latches onto the water molecule and creates something called a coordinate covalent bond. This is different from a regular covalent bond because in a regular covalent bond, both atoms participate in the chemical bond itself. So both atoms will donate one electron each in the chemical bond versus in a coordinate covalent bond, the oxygen provides both sets of electrons in this chemical bond itself. Once the hydrogen ion latches onto the water molecule, it is now called a hydronium ion with the chemical formula H3O+. You can also represent it with the chemical formula H plus H2O, but we generally like to simplify things and write it as an H3O plus instead. If you really want to simplify it further, just write down H plus. Just be aware that H plus ions don't exist by themselves. They're always hydrated and attached to a water molecule in a hydronium configuration. All right, so just be aware, anytime you see an H plus in the textbook, what they really mean is hydronium, H3O+. Unfortunately, Arrhenius' definition was a little too specific. It was unable to explain substances that behave like bases, but did not contain the OH in their chemical formula. So for example, ammonia. Ammonia has all the properties of a base. It tastes bitter. It can create an electrolytic solution that conducts electricity. It uh, breaks down oils and fats. And yet, it can't be considered a base, according to the Arrhenius' definition, because there's no OH inside of it. It, in and of itself, cannot release hydroxide ions. So here we have a situation where a compound is essentially a base in everything except in name. So, enter in Bronsted and Lowry, who independently proposed a new definition of acids and bases. Whereas the Arrhenius definition was built around what each substance could release, H plus ions or OH minus ions, the Bronsted-Lowry definition was built around how they behaved around each other. So the acids donate protons, while bases accept protons. And if you remember, protons are essentially H plus ions. So that means both the Arrhenius definition of acids and the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids match up. So an Arrhenius acid is a Bronsted-Lowry acid, and vice versa, a Bronsted-Lowry acid is an Arrhenius acid. So in that respect, they do agree. However, while an Arrhenius base is also a Bronsted-Lowry base, a Bronsted-Lowry base might not be an Arrhenius base. You see, Arrhenius' definition for bases was very specific. A base must have a hydroxide ion in its chemical formula. Whereas the Bronsted-Lowry definition was a little more generic. 
And so what you see over here in the Venn diagram is that if you are an Arrhenius base, you do fall under the definition of a bronsted lowry base. But if you're a bronsted lowry base, you might not fall under the definition of an Arrhenius base. All right, so be aware, an Arrhenius base will always be a bronsted lowry base, but a bronsted lowry base might not always be an Arrhenius base. So while the bronsted lowry definition is more inclusive, the Arrhenius definition is very exclusive. Now, one other thing I want to draw your attention to before we move ahead are these two terms, ionization versus dissociation. In both cases, charged ions are released. And so that's why sometimes they are used interchangeably, but that's not correct. When it comes to ionization, they were not charged particles before. So for instance, hydrogen chloride, an Arrhenius acid, water. They may be polar, but they're definitely not charged. But through the process of ionization where loss or gain of electrons occurs, you create charged ions afterwards. On the other hand, dissociation means that you have an ionic compound where they were originally charged, breaking up or dissociating into ions that are surrounded by water in this example, for instance. All right, so with dissociation, you had charged artic uh, particles before and after the process of dissociation, whereas ionization, you have charged particles present after the process only. But in both cases, charged ions are released. And that's what's happening to the ammonia. Both ammonia and water are polar molecules, but they don't have any ions present. Through the process of ionization, this H latches onto the ammonia to produce an ammonium cation, and then you're left with a hydroxide anion. And that's where ammonia gets its basic properties. So it's not that ammonia releases the hydroxide directly. Instead, the ammonia causes the water to release the hydroxide ion for it. To help you memorize the bronsted lowry definition, just remember the acronym BIG ALE. BIG ALE stands for BASE IS GAIN WHILE ACID IS LOSS. Alright, so whichever compound gains a proton is considered to be the base, while whichever compound loses a proton is considered to be an acid. And don't forget that an, a proton is essentially an H plus ion. So looking at the reaction between hydrochloric acid and ammonia, we notice that HCl turns into Cl. And so what's happened before, between here and here? The H has disappeared. So whoever loses the H is considered the acid, thus the HCl is considered to be an acid. Versus NH3, from here to here, it's gained an H, gained the proton. And so because it's gained it, base is gain. This is considered to be the base. Now, once the acid loses its H, loses its proton, is considered to be the conjugate base. And vice versa, once the base has gained its proton, we call it the conjugate acid. So conjugate just means partnership. HCl once was an acid that lost protons. Now it's considered to be a conjugate base. And ammonia was the base that gained a proton. Now it's called a conjugate acid. So they just switch places. While one was an acid, turns into a base. One was a base, turns into an acid. Uh, the reason we can do that is because when the reaction is reversible, or if the reaction is reversible anyway, now this guy over here is gaining a proton, right? So the H will be latched onto the Cl, so gaining it. Base is gain, so this is the conjugate base now. It's given the basic properties. And this will be the conjugate acid if we go in the reverse direction, because it's going to lose the H plus ion to the chlorine and turn into this over here. All right, so ammonium is the conjugate acid, while Cl- is the conjugate base. So what I want you to do is try out these two uh, reactions over here. Tell me which one is the acid, which one's the base, which one's the conjugate acid, which one's the conjugate base. Press pause when you're ready, press play, and we'll go over it together. All right, so going back to the acronym, base is gain, acid is loss. Let's take a look at H2PO4. It looks a lot like HPO4. Have I gained something or have I lost something during this process? Well, I had two H's, now I only have one, so therefore I've lost an H. Acid is loss of a proton, so therefore this is the acid. And what does the acid turn into after it's uh, lost its acid? We call it the conjugate base, so the opposite of each other. Versus over here, the carbonate ion, CO3 minus, now it looks like HCO3, so it seems to have gained the H. Base is gain, therefore this is considered the base. And afterwards, 
it once it's gained the uh, proton, we call it the opposite, which is a conjugate acid. So if we went in reverse, the base gains an H, turning into this, and the acid loses the H, turning into this. Similarly down here, HCOH has lost an H, so we can call it a acid, and CN has gained an H, so we can call it the base. Now HCOH was the acid, so therefore this must be the conjugate base. CN lost, I'm sorry, gained a H, so now it's called the conjugate acid instead. Alright, so that concludes our brief introduction to acids and bases, specifically looking at Arrhenius versus the brasset lowry definitions. In part 2 of our next video tutorial, we will discuss the autoionization of water, pH and pOH calculations, and strong versus weak acids and bases.